Okay, so I think we might get started. So, as I said, welcome to our session today, um, Low Vision at Home with some fun and games. And the presenters today are a few of us here at Quantum. So we've got Stuart Andrews, who's a low vision consultant in uh, Victoria. We've got myself, Rebecca Clark, and I'm here in New South Wales in Sydney. And we've also got Jim Fraser, assistive technology consultant, who's with Quantum and here in Sydney as well. And he's being shy at the moment and not on camera. So we'll see him later. So I'd just like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land from which this webinar is being presented. And in our case, it's the Darug and Karingai um, people here in Sydney and pay our respects to any elders past or present. And just a little bit of housekeeping for anyone that might not have been to one of our webinars before. Your microphone will be on mute during the webinar, but we will have time for questions at the end. And if you do have any questions or comments, please put them in the chat, which you can get to with Alt and H for keyboard users or for questions, you can put them in the Q&A, which you can also tab to. And we are, um, will um, answer everything at the end. And the session is being recorded and we'll send, send that to you afterwards. So just a bit of an overview of today's session. We'll have a bit of an introduction to what this is all about. And then we'll look at some different solutions for doing um, written puzzles with low vision. And Stuart's gonna present that and we've got a pre-recorded video to show you with some ideas about that. We'll show some solutions for reading music. Uh, some options if you want to do sewing and needle crafts, some options for paper crafts like scrapbooking and card making, and then a little bit about what you might do if you're trying to play cards and board games with low vision. And then we'll have questions and answers at the end. So, so who are Quantum? We're a provider of assistive technology to people with low vision, blindness, and any reading difficulties. And um, we've been around for over 30 years. We used to manufacture equipment and now we distribute a whole range of different options. So we work together with, with you as individuals, your assistive technology providers, teachers, parents, and carers to try and find the best options for you for what you're trying to do. And we have a wide choice of quality products from a variety of suppliers. So you can um, test out what might best suit you. And um, we have a number of fully equipped site support centres around the country. So we've got here in Thornley, we've got in Southern Sydney in Kiriwi, down in Melbourne, we'll have a new one in, um, remind me Stuart, that's uh, you know, in Mount Waverley. Mount Waverley now, yeah, yeah opening, recently moving. Opening in uh, November sometime, oh, hopefully. Yeah. Excellent. And um, also in Brisbane in Ladhope, but we've also got consultants around the country that can come, come and see you. And we've recently had got somebody in South Australia as well. Uh, we're an NDIS provider and we're also a DVA provider and we're working with job access and schools and education and individually funded people and um, My Age Care funding uh, for, to help people uh, get what they might need. So we, we can provide equipment trials and joint assessments with your um, health professionals. So for things like NDIS assistive technology um, assessments, we can help out with that. We can also provide training on different um, equipment. We don't just necessarily, unless you want us to, send it out and leave you to work it out. We always have after sale support. And we also have our own service uh, center and uh, support line. So um, you know, we, we're there to help you with your equipment. So what's today's about? So a lot of the time when we're talking to people, it might be talking about reading. Um, and accessing information, and obviously that's really important, but it's also Im uh, important to um, maintain your other, um, your hobbies and activities if you've got low vision. So you can uh, continue to do what you enjoy or even learn new skills and keep up your skills and add to them. It can also help, you know, you can keep in touch with your social circle. So if you're in a knitting group or a music group or bridge club, um, and that might involve um, assistive technology and there's a range of options that we'll look at today that might help you with that so but it also might be working with an OT to adapt techniques or simple little things like self threading needles and that kind of or easier threading needles and that kind of thing so 
we won't be going out as much into that today, but that there are other, you know, simple solutions as well, depending on what you're trying to do and your challenges. So there's some of the things we might be looking at today are things like lighting and magnifiers, um, optical magnifiers, which come in a range of uh, strengths, handheld electronic magnifiers like the Clover 6, and we'll, you know, during the demonstrations, we'll go through these in more detail. We've got um, other portable electronic magnifiers like the Clover 10 on a stand, so you can work underneath. Transportable electronic magnifiers like the Clover Book, which again has got room for riding underneath and doing things. And things like the Digimax, which are more of a desktop style magnifier. So um, that's really the end of the introduction. I'll hand over to Stuart to uh, introduce um, his part. So. Right. Uh, thanks, Rebecca. So I, I think, as you can see, um, with Rebecca showing those slides, there's quite a lot of different um, different products that are available. I, I think all all in all, Quantum would would have probably more than thirty products which which could assist people. So what we're showing today is, is probably just a bit of a sample of, what, of what's actually available and out there. And uh, due to the, the the person's individual requirements and exactly what what they actually would like to do in their vision, um, certain products will suit will will suit certain people in their situations. Um, so we're just going to show a couple of um, short videos here. Uh, they're just product videos which which show um, show us doing some puzzles and crosswords. Uh, and, and the thing to keep in mind is these same sort of techniques and principles can be used for other things like, you know, writing out a shopping list or, or perhaps if you have to sign some, sign some documents. So maybe Rebecca, if we could just start up the videos. Sure. Just a moment. I'll just do that. So... Can you see that okay? Uh, yes, hello. Stuart from Quantum Reading Learning Vision. Here today I'm just going to show you another item which can assist people with um, doing things like crossword puzzles and sudokus. So this is the Clover 6 portable electronic magnifier. It actually has quite a nice handle which folds out easily. The design allows it to be used by both left and right handed people. You can just turn the magnifier around. So here we have a, a puzzle book. And we can hold the magnifier over the document. We can use the buttons on the side to change the level of magnification. There's also buttons to change the contrast. And the size. So I suppose the disadvantages of a handheld optical magnifier, magnifier like this is you need to hold it reasonably steady at high magnification to be able to put your hand underneath and fill in, fill in the documents. You can also use the pinch gesture on the screen here. So this is actually one of the one of the few items which has a has a touch screen. So that's the Clover 6 portable electronic magnifier. Just here with some helpful tips on how to use the Clover 10 uh, portable electronic magnifier with, with stand to help do crossword puzzles or sudokus. Uh, so you put the, the Clover 10 into the stand we can still access the buttons to change the size or alter the contrast of the, of the text. We can go across and find uh, the clues here. So Queen hit, another one bites the something dust and we can go up to number one. We can easily access this and fill in, fill in the clues. Just showing how to use the Clearview C 
uh, desktop magnifier to help with things like, like word searches. So here we've got a word search and we've put it underneath the screen on the XY table. So there's some very simple controls here for, for adjusting the level of magnification. It's just a dial that you turn, which as you can see will, will change the size of the print. There's also a button on top to change the different contrasts, which can help. I find that having it on natural colour does make it a little bit easier when you've got your, your hand underneath and you're, you're looking at things in natural colour. It makes it just a little bit easier to fill out. So if we're here and we're trying to find one of these words, um, well these are names actually, we can have a look here. There's one there called Brook. So then we can come back up on the word search, look for a B, make it a bit bigger if we need. There's B R O O K, and I'm doing that by by moving the X Y table. Can use a highlighter, or we could circle it, and it can just go across the numbers. We can come back down and then cross Brook off the list. Uh, there is also another button on here or another adjustment which we can push which will actually go back to an overview view of the puzzle and then if we if we needed to go down and find another name we could push that button again and go back to our previous level of magnification. So that's the Clearview C desktop magnifier with XY table. Just here with the Optilec Compact 10, uh, just showing how you can use this to do uh, puzzles like crosswords. So this has actually got a, an arm which folds out here, which has a camera, and the camera actually is looking down on the page over here. We have a touch screen that we can we can push to increase the magnification, and we can also change the different colour co contrasts. And as you can see, we can increase the magnification quite a lot to see the page and get it to a, a level where we can where we can see it. We can put our hand underneath here. Quite easy to do. Fill in the document, write in the answers. So that's the Optilec. Compact 10. Just showing how to use the uh, Digimax to uh, help with things like crosswords or Sudoku puzzles. So we've got the Digimax here. It's a desktop magnifier and the camera is actually at the front of the screen looking, looking down at the page. So we've got a handy control panel over here with some adjustments on there like to change the, the size of the print. As you can see we can magnify that up quite a lot. We've got a, a button there to alter the contrast. There's lots of different contrasts that we can change to depending on what suits the person. So here we are, we've got our crossword puzzle. We've got uh, number 57 music label, then we can actually move the page across under the camera, go through, find number 57, so 57 down, there it is, and then we can get our pen, put that under there and fill in the answer. There is also a handy feature on the control panel which is a find feature, so you can actually hold this button in which will then bring you back to an overview. So if you wanted to navigate around the page and go back to the go back to the clues, then you could actually push that button there. So that's the Digimax from Quantum. Okay, so as you can see there, there was uh, five different products which, um, which can be used to do puzzles. And once, as I said before, you could also use exactly the same principles for signing documents or writing out a shopping list.
uh, just filling in information on, on forms and documents. Uh, so some of the things that, that, that didn't sort of stand out in those videos was um, some things that can help dramatically is have a really clear work area. So you, you d once you start magnifying um, puzzles and documents, you, you don't want to keep putting other puzzles on top of the one puzzle that you've got, because once you magnify things, it's very easy to actually lose track of where you are in the document. So probably a little bit of advice is have, have a nice clear work area, only work on one page at a time. When you finish with that page, move it out of the way, get in, get in the next page uh, to continue working. Um, I also used a black texter. So there's lots of people who we see and you know the, the habit is to use a biro or use a pencil or use a, um, a, a even a, a pen with a with a like a green pen or a red pen or something like this so you you get a massive advantage by using a um, a black texter uh, and just try out a few different types of textures uh, because that extra contrast will, will definitely help the other thing is sit as close as you can to the screen so if you're looking at one of these screens you want to be sitting not uh, as close as you comfortably can to the screen because you get the same advantage of sitting twice as close to the screen as you do by magnifying the screen two times as much. So if you're going to sit back, like say with that uh, Digimax uh, desktop magnifier with the cameras at the front, you're actually sitting quite a long way away from the screen. So which means you would, um, to, to be able to see what you're doing, you may have to increase the magnification a little bit more, which means you won't get as much information on the screen. So just an advantage is, is sit as close as you can to the screen. And probably the final point is um, when you're filling in um, a crossword or if you're writing something, it's a bit of a, a, a skill that you need to develop of looking away from where you're writing because you, you've possibly spent the last uh, 20 to 50 years looking at your pen as you write something. And it does take a bit of time to uh, look up at a screen while you're writing on a page down below. So it does take a little bit of time to learn that skill. And, um, but look, I've seen people who've, uh, who do a crossword a day. Uh, they've got incredibly low vision. Uh, if they were to look at a newspaper, they, they would, they would only be able to read headline size print on the newspaper, but they can work their way through uh, a crossword a day, with a, especially with a desktop magnifier. Great, thanks, Stuart. That's yeah, really great tips there. So um, yeah, so that's that's for different puzzles and things, and obviously the same thing for doing Sudoku or anything like that, um, as Stuart said. So our next uh, little piece will be about doing, uh, trying to read music um, with, and sheet music, um, if you're somebody that likes to, uh, to play an instrument. So I'm just going to um, move the camera here and Jim's gonna give us a bit of a demonstration on the, how you might do that. And Stuart's gonna then talk later about um, someone that we've seen that, that has been able to, to use devices to do that. So, okay, I'll just switch video off there. So, okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so what I've done is I've set up a very basic thing, making sure that the, um, uh, the magnifier is elevated above the back of the keyboard. So what I've done is just push the um, music underneath here. You've got different ways to change the color and tone on this. So you can go from, different, from there. You, there's a little joystick, you can move it around. It's a matter of getting uh, something where you feel comfortable in seeing the music and then just moving around. And as I said earlier, it's good for practice. You can use the same line over and over again so you can get really good and do the right thing. So that you, can, you can sound like a beautiful player. So um, I just mentioned, the, if you could see this one over here, I just think the Clover book has a, a little bit better camera in the way it shows on screen because you can move the screen either straight up like that or you can move it down so that the camera on the back points down to the music and which makes it a bit easier to um, move it um, underneath. 
Great, thank, thanks for that. I think I'll just mute that for a second. Okay, we're not going to get double speak there. Okay. Um, so some of the other things we've got are uh, wearable type devices. So these ones. You could have got a better model there. <laughs> there we go. So the it's an adjustment on the side. side. I don't know if that's still causing a problem with people not being able to see. Oh yeah, they can see it now. So these are um, little devices that will um, move your you move in and out and then they're actually designed to uh, work at a short distance so if you were trying to um, read a piece of music uh, for example thanks Jim so, so if you're singing in a choir or um, it, they are hands-free so that they're only about two times magnification but uh, that, that is an option and we've also even now got electronic um, wearable devices which again it's a little bit difficult to show but um things like the ace site vr they're like a virtual reality headset so they're like having something like the clover book um, where it electronically magnifies on your head and you you've got a remote that you can adjust the size and the color and then um you can have things in front of you or on a stand and again it would be hands-free so i don't know um Stuart might want to talk about the person that uh, he had that was able to uh, to use that sort of system for playing the violin. So uh, yeah, thanks. Rebecca. Yeah, thanks, Rebecca. So I think the trick with music is you need to be able to follow the follow the music. So it, it's very hard with a lot of these devices to be able to um, magnify up a sheet of music and then move it along as you're as you're playing the music so i actually had this guy who who plays the violin and i don't know if you've ever seen anyone play the violin but they seem to wobble their head around quite a lot uh, as they play so um, if you can imagine wearing one of these devices and then moving your head around all the time um, you're sort of exaggerating the movement of whatever you're magnifying quite a lot so you know that that, that creates you know, it makes people feel get a bit of vertigo and feel a bit sort of seasick. Um, so with the um, with this gentleman, he used the uh, the iris vision, magnified it about two times, he changed the contrast to black on white, and he would actually freeze freeze the image of of the um, of the music, and then he was able to then move his head around so he could wobble his head. And as he was wobbling his head, the text wasn't, the magnification effect wasn't wobbling what he was looking at. Um, but he was able to track left to right and up and down on the frozen image in the virtual reality glasses. So it's almost the same effect as if you were sitting in a cinema and you were sitting in the front row and they had the music up on a big screen and he was able to track left to right um, to follow the music. And he found that that, that was quite, quite successful. Um, with, with those other items, like we also looked with this gentleman at um, uh, the Max Detail glasses and, and um, the Max TV glasses, but they're only a two times magnifier and they didn't have that contrast um, change. So that, that wouldn't have helped him. Um, he already had a um, compact 10 uh, with the arm that folded out. But once again, by the time he made it, you know, two or three times magnified, he just couldn't get enough information on, on the small screen to see it. Um, the, the other thing that is that, that was suggested was maybe we could cable in from one of these electronic devices to his large TV set. So, you know, he's got like a big 50 inch TV screen on the wall and there's quite a few devices that we have uh, like the Clover range and the Clearview range where you can actually plug a HDMI cable in and cable up 
to to a very large TV screen. So you know that that was probably the next stage if he wasn't going to be happy with the Iris Vision uh, was cable into a nice big screen, and then you know he, he could have a, a massive amount of ma magnification in a high contrast up on his own TV screen. Yeah, so that was just one of the experiences that I had with a client and it was quite successful. Yeah, so yeah, the music thing has been a, a challenge for a long time for, for people. So um, yeah, being able to have the wearables and the the, the electronic wearable we showed was the um, Ace Sight VR, but there's also the Iris Vision and another Ace Sight. And there's there's a variety on the, around the place. So and they keep coming out with different ones. So depends on people's eye condition, whether it's going to suit, obviously. But uh, again, something we can we can try with people. So the next little section we're going to do, and I'm going to have to switch um, cameras and speakers and things. So please let me know if you can't see, is um, looking at sewing and um, needle craft. So which is also a popular thing for people to do. So. Okay, so hopefully people can see the uh, the video there of the different devices. Can you see it? Yep. Okay, so so one of the first things, you know, quite often things like threading a needle is um, an option that people find uh, difficult, and there may there are some some fairly simple things on the market like. Um, needles with uh, sort of a V shape or that you can um, more easily do but we also find people quite like um, if you if you only need a bit of magnification something like the this um, magnificent lamp which has its has built-in light can be quite useful for um, for sewing a needle craft because you can have it on a desk and you can adjust the angle I've just got it this way just for ease of use. So if I've got my little bit of thread here, so you can see if I, you can check your uh, color of the thread. You can, I'm not really a sewer, so. <laughs> but you can find the end of your thread. Um, the only thing is, with this sort of thing is the actual depth perception because you're looking through a, a screen or a um, glass, you can then try and find your actual, and bring it into focus and try and thread the needle, which I failed to do there. Um, yeah, again, that's the sort of thing that can take some practice but you'd also be able to put your, your sewing pattern under here to read, your knitting pattern. So yeah, there you can see the thread, see the eye of the needle. So it's not easy, there we go. Yeah, so you can get focus on that. You can also use it for things like looking at your knitting needles. And again, you'd be able to knit under here because you've got the space under there and you could, Say check the gauge of your gauge of your needle. Um, again, the clover book because it's got a um, the cameras towards the front. Again, um, I've had a lady that has used see that one there. So again, you can have your thread. You probably like if it's a dark colour, you probably want something pale underneath. So and you can spot your needle. And you can actually take the autofocus, you can lock the autofocus so it's not going in and out. So yeah, so there we go, it's white background. And you can try and find your needle. So, or put your uh, needles underneath. So you can just check or check if you've dropped a stitch or, or put it in knitting pattern or anything like that under there. Um, you could do a similar thing with the clover, the clover ten. Um, 
but we've also got the sticky necks if I bring that into you. And this is quite, this has got a 24 inch screen. And because the camera again is on the front, you can put your thread and you can have see the screen. And that's also got a focus lock. So things aren't going in and out. So you can get focus on your thread. There we go. So then you can you can zoom in and out. This one. And then once you've got it to the magnification you lock, you can lock the focus. So again, it's not turning in and out. So you can find your end of your thread. Again, it's the depth perception thing can be kind of a uh, and that's where people like your OTs can come in and, and help you with techniques for doing this. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. and again, things like your knitting needles or your embroidery, you can have under here and you can see where you are, um, find your spot in your pattern, all that sort of thing, find where you're trying to sew a button on and that kind of, that kind of thing. So, uh, that's that's uh, saying. Or again, the max detail. I'm not sure how the the wearable electronics would go with with trying to sew using those. I've not come across anyone that's trying to to use it for that. Um, so yeah, again, lots lots of different options. It's a case of trying it and finding what might work for you. Um, the other thing I was going to show was sort of paper craft. And again, it's the same sort of idea. If I've got um, scrapbooking or making cards. Again, things like the if you're only needing a bit of magnification, something like the magnificent lamp. You can turn, you can have a look at, you know, if you're trying to put a photo. I have a look at your uh, scrapbooking card, find where to place it on the card, and because it's you can angle angle things where how you want, you can have it quite low and be looking through. I can get my glue say and put that in the right spot so you can see what I'm doing. For example, you can see whether you've got it lined up. So, and again, that's this kind of one comes with a, a either to sit on a table or it does also have a, a longer stand so you can have it um, sitting on the floor. And again, things like this closure book you've got, you can put underneath. I can move things around, magnify, find the spot. If I wanted to add something like a little label, again, you can zoom right out and find where you want to put things, and you can arrange your uh, what you want to do. Sorry, oh, <laughs> sorry, you <laughs> cut my arm. So that will zoom right out, and And you can arrange a page how you want. But for something like that, having the bigger screen obviously also might help. So again, something like the Digimax. You've got the room at the front. You can set your work area out. You can zoom in and out. A bit of reflection on here. Sure. And I can arrange different things. Same if you were making cards, anything like that. And you can, okay. You know, put your stickers on and arrange things how you want. Um, so you can carry on doing your hobbies like that. Um, so again, for having a look at your bits and pieces, something like the uh, the Clover Six might also help. So if you're trying to find things in your, whether it's your sewing case or your um, 
you know, your box of bits and pieces. Is this the set of stickers that I want? If I've got it on the colour. Again, really, the colour option is what you need for this. And so I've got the little stickers there. Okay, I want that one. You can peel that off. Or going through your photos. Okay, is that what I want? Or this, you know, these little embellishments and things like that. So, so does it? Again, it just depends what kind of level of magnification you want um, with what you're trying to do. So yeah, if anyone's got any questions about that, you know, people okay. If people are raising their hands, we'll, we'll try and get to you at the end when we yeah, we can uh, go through and um, raise that. And finally, I was going to talk about. Um, what you might do if you're playing cards or other cards or other um, board games and things like that, if you're trying to actually read cards. Again, you want some, obviously you want something portable if you're, particularly if you're going out and about. So say I've got my playing card here. Again, oh, let's see. Okay, so that's my playing card. So something like the Clover 6, you can check, oh, is that a 10? And you can have your hand and because it's um you know just using the one hand you can quite easily work out what cards you've got again there are also things like live print playing cards and ones with braille on and that kind of thing um you might just need some sort of handheld magnifying glass so we do have a number with uh, lights on that you know this one's only a two times but they come in up to 14 times and again you can work out what you've got, or it might be your Scrabble tile, your Mahjong tile, whatever that is. Um, also, again, that might be where um, the max detail or the um, the wearables come in as well, that you could, uh, you can put on. So, I sit down here, can you see me on the... Okay, yep. yep. Okay, so I could have my hand of cards here. And then I can, you know, have I got the royal flush or <laughs> so you can carry on playing your bridge or your cards and or you know, family games night if you're trying to read you know quiz cards or anything like that, trivial pursuit. I know during lockdown we've been having family uh, trivial pursuit with people in the UK. So um, <laughs> that would be handy for that. So uh, anything like that. Um is uh, quite good. And again, the electronic wearables, you know, um, that might be suitable to use as well. So, um, yeah, that kind of concludes the sorts of things we were talking about today. But uh, I'll just come back to my computer here. I suppose, Rebecca, that, that okay. did you, that okay. did you, Max? Um, um, so, yeah, that. Sorry. I, might, I might just just cut in there just for a second that when you were using that digimax that actually reminded me of another client who i saw and um she actually did pyography and i don't know if anyone knows what pyography is uh, i didn't know it at the time but she actually um all, all her life she had these um she did pyography which is um burning with a soldering iron into um like coasters and pictures and things like this mm -hmm. and um she had a uh, degenerative disease and and her goal was to keep active and continue doing her hobbies and crafts because that's what she liked to do and uh, i was i was sort of a bit worried about her with her soldering iron at high magnification looking at screens mm -hmm. and holding magnifiers and all this sort of stuff but she's been doing that for years and um mm -hmm. highly successful yeah. Oh, that's great. So, yeah. And also, I mean, you know, it might be gardening. I know there's, you know, when I was in Perth, there was a, a woodwork and I believe Vision Australia have one as well. Like there's woodwork um, clubs where you, they can teach you how to do woodwork with low vision, which, um, yeah, I was <laughs> you know, always very impressed by. So, yeah, it, you know, this is just a few examples of different things that we've shown um, today that we've been able to do with this setup. But uh, yeah um so yeah now is probably the time for questions so i'll just share my screen again for a moment uh, i think we've got quite a few questions 
in the um, the chat and the Q and A. But yeah, if if you've got ones now, and if people had got their hands up, then uh, I can try and uh, we can try and unmute people to do that. So. Um, Okay, people have asked whether the the, vis the video will be captioned. Yet yeah, we will um, we will do that. Um, so yeah, make sure that's uh, accessible for people. Uh, so I think Jim's answered a few questions, but I might read those out in case people haven't seen them. So does the device used for reading have an auto scroll function, so you can play the whole piece without stopping? Um, yeah, so he said on it doesn't have an auto scroll, but you can store pictures of sheep, so you'd have to move them along. That is one of the main challenges with music, is obviously trying to uh, turn the pages and uh, have that happen. I know, you know, sometimes people have set things up on computers, and we were looking at stuff like the Limelighter um, for that kind of option. Um, the Compact 10 doesn't have a stand, but the Clover 10 does. Um, the Compact 10 has the swing out camera so that you can put things underneath um okay so and i think that is those ones so let me just see i'll see if we can um let people talk so i'm just going in no particular order here so there's uh judy did you have a question i'm just going to let you talk Okay, um, I've got a Patricia with your hand up. If you were wanting to ask her a question, I can. You should be able to talk now if you want to. No? Just trying to unmute people here. But <laughs> Okay, if anyone wants to put their um, question in the chat if they don't want to talk. So, Palea as well, we've got here. Are you wanting to speak? You should be able to unmute yourself, I think. Okay, so let's have a look at the uh, look at the chat. Um, okay, so Pele, were you wanting to talk? Okay, people should hopefully be able to talk if they want to, but we'll we'll look at the ones in the chat. So. Um, Okay, is the Clover book going to be available going forward? Uh, yes, it's available now. So, Jeff, thank you for answering that. He's one of my colleagues. Um, and the electronic magnifiers, yeah, can go up to 60 times. I think the wearable ones go up to about 15. Um, what can be used for threading the needle on a sewing machine? You could, depending on the level of magnification, you could possibly use, um, place something like the the magnificent lamp over it to try and have a have a look um but yeah some of them also have auto needle threading um so yeah um okay and yes i'll, I'll show our website where you can people can make a referral as well um people um jeff's also said that using a digimax with the um camera can help as well um Okay, and the battery life for the Clover 6 is about three hours. Um, but yeah, it's got a rechargeable battery. Um, the Clover 6 uh, over the um, mobile phone, again, just tried to answer some of these, but um, it's got, you can change the contrast easily. You've not got to go into a particular app. It's got that swing out handle. Um, and it's also got a, a distance camera, so or you can put it over things, so it can be a bit steadier than a, an iPhone. And um, you know, while that can be very useful to some people, that can be a bit fiddly. Um, and 
you know, be using up your battery as well. So, um, and again, yeah, the level of magnification. Uh, people have asked about cleaning, mostly just a glasses cleaning cloth for the um, different glasses and things. Um, okay, we, yet yeah, we can bring products out for home trials. Um, okay. Someone's also asked a question about bus numbers. Again, we've got things like monoculars that you could use um, for that. Pos the, the wearable electronic magnifiers aren't recommended for walking around with, but you could possibly put them on if you're expecting a bus. Um, or, you know, there are, again, there's apps and things that might tell you where the, when the bus is, is coming. So, yeah, that can be another tricky one. Um, Oh, the cost of the Digimax. Um, oh, does the Max detail come in a clip-on? Um, no, I don't know. We did used to have something called a Labo clip or a Rido clip, so we've possibly still got something of that kind of thing. And the cost of the Digimax is, again, I'll share my screen here with the website. So... Um, Digimax, I believe, is um, so that's three thousand four hundred ninety. The Cloverbook Light is two thousand nine hundred and fifty. There is a version, the Pro, which also has speech and a distance camera, and that's three nine forty. Um, the Max Detail Glass is around some two hundred or something, I think. Um, Okay, uh, with devices that need to be charged, are they user friendly? Um, all of them just have one port for charging, so um, it's pretty obvious which um, where you have to charge it. So there's only one input, and we'd help people with um, learning how to do that. Um, the wearable ones, the the a site VR about four thousand nine hundred, just under that. Um, there is one set that was about seven and a half, um, and the little max detail. Yeah, oh, I'll find that out for you. Um, um, but yeah, if um, people can make a referral um, or contact us for a um, thing, I'll just see whether other questions. Um, and yeah, well, we will forward the video to people. Um, oh, to see the different devices, depending on where you are in the country, I'll put up our contact details in a moment. Um, but we've got um, centres in um, Brisbane, Melbourne and two in Sydney. Um, we've got consultants in northern and western Queensland and um, also in South Australia. And we do get to Tasmania and WA when we're allowed to travel or we can send the devices. Um, so yeah, we, we can, um, if you contact our main number or as via email, um, you can be put in touch with your local consultant. Um, half of Canberra, um, that's Jeff's area. Yeah, we, we well have been able to travel to Canberra, um, but yeah, otherwise, yeah, if you are able to get to Sydney, that's great. Um, okay. Have a few more in the chat. Okay, so thank you. Um, yeah, Jeff's been putting up the prices, so thank you for that. Um, hopefully, I've got other people's questions. Sorry, I've not been able to. Oh, hello. Yep. Uh, I'm just asking a question which may um, be a bit unusual. That is, I've been using my iPad, and uh, and I find it's excellent in increasing the font etc mm -hmm. but I there was a stand that i could purchase that would uh, make the ipad um, function for me um, one of the problems is that the stand it comes with with the folding keyboard uh, collapses and doesn't work but it's a <clears throat> very useful instrument but i don't know that there's a stand available Hello. from apple i think there is yeah there are um, stands available 
Oh, there's one made by Logitech, apparently. So um, I'm not sure whether they're available at Apple stores. But uh, yeah, there are such things available that could possibly put the, in a stand you could use like that. So do you, do you have do you have one? No, we don't have that. Yeah, we, we don't do. Uh, we've got some Apple key, uh, live print keyboards, but that's about it in terms of. Um, I think the um, the stands from Logitech were discontinued about ah. 12 months ago. They, oh. they were really popular and, you know, a lot of people are asking about them. So mm. I'm not sure whether they've reintroduced them because I think they would have had a lot of people would have been pretty disappointed that they were uh, discontinued. Yeah. yeah, I have to check with Vision Australia to see if they know anything about it. So. Yeah, they may. I think they might have had something on their shop. So, yeah, they might might be able to help you with that one because, they, yeah, they've got more Apple-type devices. So, yeah. Um, Thank you. No problem. Um, Violetta, did you have a question? Can you hear me? Yes, I can now. Thanks. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Thank you very much. I really enjoy your webinar. Uh, thank you, Jeff and, um, and Rebecca. Uh, my question to Rebecca is about the Digimics. Mm -hmm. um, is um, I'm, uh, when you send the invitation, I it was a demonstration of a lady doing the makeup, and that's the reason that I'm interested. Besides from the puzzles and all that, I want to exercise my mind because I'm getting old. Then mm -hmm. uh, it might be for me very useful. And you said that. That would be three thousand. Uh, three four ninety, I think. Did I say? Yeah, something like yeah, that. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. that is that very? Um, can I use uh, for the makeup? As, as yeah. Well? So the the camera on it can be um, tilted so that you can. Um, I don't know if you can see the if I. Can I pin the video on that one? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So you can you can actually point it towards yourself or away. So people have used it for painting and things as well. So it, yeah, it will. Oh, run. Hi. Oh, you point so yourself. You can, you like can a, twist it around. So what yeah. Do you do with your mobile phone like um like uh, what is like take a uh, what is that video call or something? Point to yourself. That will be something similar like that. Oh, for video call. Um, um, the Digi Mac is, uh, is it will reflect my my face like in a mirror. Is that what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, then I can yeah. use to to do my makeup. Yeah. yeah. If you wanted to have a look at that, we can yeah certainly certainly show you. So I'll see if I can uh, show you. Um, where's my? Hmm. So if I just so if I've got it on here, if I if I try and pin. You see, I don't want to see my face in my. So you can see, I've got that the camera pointed at me there. Can make is that visible? Uh, I, are you pointing yourself? No, yeah. I didn't see it at all. It's just only the background. Can you see? Um, I'm trying to. Not sure. Uh, if I turn the camera down. Oh. And then if I turn it to me. Oh, yes. Yeah, then you can zoom in and out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, 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 then I, maybe I can go to the office and try yeah. and don't leave. I think I can do that. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Rebecca. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, right. So I'll... Um, so if there weren't any other, have we got any other questions? Oh, do we still do tours with devices? Okay. Um, yeah, Stuart, you were wanting to answer that one, I think. Well, um, um, yeah, sorry about that. Um, so yes, look, we will be um, when we're allowed to. So we would love to be out there um, doing tours, like our face-to-face -face interaction with people has been quite difficult um, in the current situation. So when we're when we're allowed to, we'll certainly be out there uh, having expos and tours and things to um, give people the opportunity to try out all these different products. That was good. 
Okay. Yes, we're we've got we our offices are or at least in Sydney now are um are open. Um but uh yeah. So hopefully the guys in Melbourne can get out again soon. <laughs> so I'll just show our um my slideshow again. So so yeah, so if, if people are interested in, in demonstrations and that is really the best way to um you know, try and find out what might suit you. Um, give us a call on one three hundred eight eight three eight five three, or info or email us at info at quantumrlv.com.au. Um, our website quantumrlv that's reading learning vision dot com dot au has got quite a lot of it's got all our equipment on there, but it's also got to make a referral or um, request a demonstration on there i think so that very shortly there will be book a demonstration option on there so uh thank you everybody uh, for joining i hope that's been uh, useful sorry about the <laughs> technical <laughs> messing around um but hopefully we'll sort that out in the video so uh, I'll, uh, oh we've got another question oh okay thank you very much. okay so enjoy the rest of your day